Hey Hard Fans, Butch Hartman here. Extra video this week. Why? Because you're all extra crispy. I mean, extra awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. As you know, I did a big Kickstarter over the summer for my brand new streaming service, Oaxis Entertainment. It will be coming out within the next year. That's what we're shooting for. We're very excited about it. And we can do it because of you, all of you who supported my Kickstarter over the summer. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are great. And as a reward, a lot of you chose to have your social media handles shouted out on my YouTube channel. And you also asked me to answer some questions for you. So here we go. As I read these questions, you're gonna see all of the um, social media handles uh, scrolling, like just scrolling along there in the bottom of the screen. Thanks to each and every one of you guys who supported my Kickstarter. I really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get to the questions that you guys have. So thank you very much. Here we go. All right, question one comes from Andrew Walker. Thank you, Andrew Walker. All right, the question is, how did you meet your wife? Very good question. I'm serious, that's what it is. How did you meet your wife? I met my wife, it's very interesting. Um, I was very into stand-up comedy in the 1980s. I really wanted to be a stand-up comedian. And so I started doing stand-up comedy. I met some friends in the stand-up comedy world. And one of my friends was doing a stand-up comedy class. There was this woman who taught this stand-up comedy class in Los Angeles. Uh, my friend took the class, and the way the class worked was you would do six weeks, uh, once, once a week, you'd go to class and write jokes for six weeks, and your final exam was you'd go up on a stage at the end of the six weeks and do your stand-up act. And so I went to go see a friend of mine do his stand-up act at his final exam. So I'm sitting in the audience, and I'm waiting for my friend to come on, and this red-headed woman walks out and does a stand-up act. I thought she was pretty funny. Uh, you know, I, I liked a lot of things about her. I'm like, wow, she's very pretty. She left the stage, and uh, I, my friend came out and did his act, thought it was great, and uh, didn't really think too much about it. And so after that, I thought the class was great. I really wanted to take that stand-up class myself because I wanted to you know, become a better stand-up comedian. So I took the stand-up class, I signed up for the class, and the interesting thing is, the girl I thought was really pretty on the stage she took the class a second time. Uh, to this day, I don't know why. She doesn't know why, but she took the class a second time. So I met that woman who became my wife in that class. My wife, Julianne, and I met in a stand-up comedy class. That's how I met her. Okay, next question. This is from uh, Starfire1408 on Instagram. I noticed throughout Danny Phantom that the drawing style changed a bit, such as in Pirate Radio, where the style seemed to change halfway. Was this a decision made by the artist, or was this because there were switches in animation companies? Thank you so much. What a great question. Um, I don't remember Pirate Radio right offhand how it looked, but I do remember that we did use an animation company in Korea to animate the show. And sometimes what those companies would do is they would subcontract out to other companies, meaning they're assigned to do the show, but they were so busy with so many other shows they were doing, they would give it to another company. So Pirate Radio may have suffered that fate uh, where it was given to another company that wasn't as good as the company I originally hired. However, switching halfway through the show, I know that we did uh, two acts of Danny Phantom, act one and act two, commercial in the middle. So act one might have been done by a studio that I wasn't crazy about, and act two might have been done by the studio I originally hired. So I have to look at that one again, but that's probably what happened there. And also, a lot of times with animated shows like that, you're sort of at the mercy of the director of that show. So there's a director who oversees each episode. It depends on how good the director can draw, because most of the people under the director aren't as good as the director, so the director is constantly having to fix things and change things. And so it depends on the load of work uh, the director has, how good an artist or leader the director is. And so, yeah, there's many, many things that could happen to that show. But I, I still think the final product came out good, but you have a very keen eye. That was a very good question. Thank you very much. Next question, Fang King Yeti. Mr. Harbin, you talked about Sojourn's accomplishment in your Ghost Zone Secrets reveal video, but what would it be like to meet him? What would it be like to meet Sojourn? Sojourn was a character I came up with uh, who never existed in the Danny Phantom show. I just started speculating about new characters here on my YouTube channel when I made a brand new Danny Phantom video, Ghost Zone Secrets, you guys can check it out. But um, yeah, what would Sojourn, what would it be like to meet Sojourn? And Sojourn was this um, character who is sort of the overseer of the Ghost Zone. He has a book, an ancient book, where he mapped out the Ghost Zone. That was a, a kind of a, a theory I thought would be really cool, uh, some kind of a, a ghost who mapped out the whole Ghost Zone, and pages of his ancient book have been lost through the Ghost Zone. So every once in a while you'll stumble across a page of a map that kind of shows you how to get somewhere but not how to get out. You know, that'd be kind of cool. What a cool story that would be. So Sojourn is a, a character that I made up uh, here on the channel. And what would it be like to meet him? I think it'd be kind of cool, actually. I, he'd be very mysterious, very wise, probably very ancient. I think he would know a lot. And maybe he could tell me uh, 
Just how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. That would be really, that's a very ancient question I've always wanted to know the answer to. Because that's, so Sojourn can help me with that, I think. Thank you for your question. Okay, next up, from Devin Sprinkle. Please tell about a challenging point in your career. What was the challenge? How did you react? And what was the outcome? Wow. Wow. A challenging point in my career. Um, a challenging point in my career as an animator, um, one of the biggest challenges I ever had was, there's so many, a lot of the big ones, one challenging point was um, when you go to sell a new show and having to get that show from concept to pitching it in the room with people to getting it on television and then to keeping it on television. That's, a, that's kind of several uh, challenging points. But that kind of adds up to one big challenging point. You really want to make sure that these shows that you pitch are good and that once they're on, keeping them on is the challenge because uh, because people's jobs depend on it you know you want to have your show have good ratings uh, if it does have good ratings uh, it'll normally stay on the air sometimes it doesn't stay on there when it has good ratings the network has other plans that's always a challenge so keeping your spirits up keeping your show on the air and keeping your mind on your work and uh, really remembering what the audience likes those are challenging points another challenging point I had was when um, I pitched a show called Splatopus to Nickelodeon and um, it sold, like in my first meeting, they wanted to make it, they wanted to fast track and get down the air as soon as possible. Those are the words said in the room, I'll never forget, they're burned, ow. They're burned into my brain right there. Uh, and they wanted to fast track it. Always beware of those words. We're gonna fast track this, because um, normally it means we're going to slow this one down more than any other process. <laughs> we're gonna slow this one down more than any other show in our history. And um, we went from fast tracking Splatopus to three years later, after developing it for three years, working on the show over and over and over again, and it just didn't get on the air at Nickelodeon. They just, for some reason, at the end, didn't want to make it. That was an easy decision for them to make, but for me, it was kind of gut-wrenching because I put a lot of heart and soul into it, a lot of scripts, a lot of drawings, a lot of um, excitement, and um, it just didn't happen. So that was a challenging point, too. But one of the great things is that years later, today, uh, I actually have the rights back to Splatopus, so you're going to be seeing Splatopus on the OAXIS network. So thank you for your question. All right, okay, next question from Ian Hamby, whose handle is TWTales. I'm a lone creator animator wannabe who would love nothing more than to have his stories come to life in visual media. Very cool. In today's age, how does one become the next Butch Hartman? If you suddenly find yourself in the body of a no-name 26-year-old who has little more than tidbit sketches, animation, to plenty of ideas, yet motivation is running on fumes, how would you go about recreating your fan base? P.S. You're not allowed to utilize your previous works. You're starting from scratch. Okay, wait. I've got to start at age 26 again and starting from scratch, but I know what I know now. How would I go about recreating my fan base? Well, the, the simple answer is this. You have to work hard. Um, and you have to continue to work hard. I know you say here that you're running out of uh, your, your motivation, you're running on fumes. That's where you have to change your mindset. You can't be running on fumes. You have always got to have fuel in the tank and you've got to keep going. You cannot stop. And I don't mean like not stop, like constantly work 24 hours a day without sleeping. You have to have a life, of course. But you always have to stay focused on the target. You always have to keep doing something that'll advance you to the next goal even if, and especially if it means getting out of your comfort zone get out of your house get out of your desk go make some friends get out and experience the world a little bit and meet people you know, like if you're an actor go to an acting workshop if you're a singer go to a singing workshop if you're a writer go to a writing workshop get involved in groups where there are people that do what you want to do that's one way to get yourself motivated because you'll keep each other motivated sometimes you might even team up with somebody that will uh, work on a project with you and you will motivate each other through that. I've written numerous screenplays with friends of mine and it's always the same thing. I'd work all day, get off work at six o'clock and I'd call up my friend, we're gonna work for two hours, okay, and we, you know, as, as tired as I was, I'd go to my friend's house and we would write a screenplay for two hours and get maybe two or three pages done. But at the end of the process, about four or five months later, we had ourselves a screenplay, so it does add up. Keeping yourself motivated, it will add up keep yourself motivated and recreating the fan base I can't guarantee any of that it just takes you doing something long enough to make fans uh, to make fans appear <laughs> even if it's something on YouTube that you just do over and over and over again you're gonna get fans eventually so just take something choose to do it like it keep making more of it and the fans will show up I guess that is the simple answer but uh, yeah people can't be fans unless they see the thing over and over and over again so okay and as far as how to become the next Butch Hartman uh, wow that's very flattering but I would just say keep doing what you're doing but definitely love what you do because I loved what I did for many many years in Nickelodeon I loved every single second of it so always love it if you love it it won't even feel like work I guarantee you okay thanks
Next question from Meki Kiesi um, on YouTube known as Phantom Ice. Where is the city of Amity Park located? Good question. I would say we never really gave it a specific location, kind of like Dimsdale and Fairly Odd Parents never gave it a specific place. But I think if Amity Park were to be located anywhere, I'd probably say, now you know, don't get mad at me. I'm just saying it could be anywhere you think it is, but I think it'd be somewhere in middle America. Like I'm thinking the Chicago area, Cleveland area, and somewhere in, in the Midwest under Michigan, kind of between Illinois and Indiana in that area. So I'm thinking somewhere in there because I think it does snow there too. So um, yeah, I think um, that's where it would be. There you go. Thanks for asking. Okay. All right. Next question from Steven Anchor, also known as Steven Sketches on YouTube and Steven Sketches 700 on Instagram. How many shows will launch with Oaxis Entertainment? Don't know the exact amount right now, but it'll be, uh, I'll say this, it'll be over 10, less than a thousand. That's all I can say right now. It all depends on how much we can get done before launch date. And I am very, very on top of all of this. We are very excited about all the stuff we're making originally and we're going to be um, acquiring some stuff too. So I don't have an exact number for you yet, but as we get closer, I will let you know, I promise. I want you guys to be informed about everything we're doing. Will your former voice actors from your previous shows be doing any of the voices for your programs on Oaxis? Good question. We have a lot of animation we're going to be doing that's original. I would love to work with some of my former voice actors. They're great friends, they're great people, and they're super talented. So yeah, hopefully they will. Thank you so much for all your amazing shows on Nickelodeon. Well, thank you very much, Stephen Anker. I appreciate that. Okay, next up, Andrea Conkle. Handle is Ander. What should you do to prepare when pitching a show to Nickelodeon? Very easy. Have some drawings of your characters, some sample story ideas of what the characters do in the show. Because remember, it's going to be a series. You need to think of stories all the time. So start thinking of them now. It's as good a time as any. Also have maybe some background designs, one or two, not too many, and have a show Bible. That's about three or four pages of what uh, the show is. The description of the show, the world of the show, the characters of the show. Have that all written down. And have it in a little mini packet, four or five pages long, drawings, written stuff, and just uh, leave that behind. It's called a leave behind. Make sure your name is on it with your contact info as well, in case they want to contact you and go, hey, we want to pay you millions of dollars for your show. There you go. Thanks for the question. Okay, next up, Ethan Angle, also known as Ethan Angle. Was there any ghost in Danny Phantom that you really wanted to expand on but never got the chance? If yes, mind giving us an idea of what you wanted to do? Very good question. Um, I always wanted to expand more on Ember. Ember McLean, the uh, rock singing ghost. I thought she was awesome. I still think she's awesome. I wanted to write a whole album of songs for her, all based on who she thinks she is and what maybe what what, what has uh, affected her life so uh, so much. And I just thought she was great. So, yeah, Ember would probably be the ghost I'd want to expand on the most, only because she's super cool and I think she's super appealing to the audience too. And we, there was just so much to her. I don't think we ever got to find out as much as we should have. So Ember's my choice. Next up, Peter Brown. What or who creatively inspires you on a daily basis? Wow, that's a very good question. Um, I get a lot of my inspiration from comedy. I love TV comedies. I love shows like The Office. I love older shows like Taxi, Cheers. Um, you know, I like Seinfeld. There's a lot of great, great comedies I love. I love a lot of um, anime. I love a lot of older cartoons like Bugs Bunny stuff, older Disney stuff. I love old Hanna-Barbera. I've been watching recently on YouTube a lot, a lot of old 1970s cartoons, and it's just been really great, kind of firing me up again. And, and, and watching those shows again as an adult, having made shows like that now, it's like, okay, that's what they were doing there. Oh, I see, they didn't have a lot of money for this show. <laughs> so seeing things that inspired kids years ago inspires me to do things for kids uh, now, I guess you could say, and adults too. So it's just really, really cool. I watch a lot of older stuff and just keep myself inspired and keep myself entertained as much as I can. A lot of things that inspire me lately um, are a lot of the Marvel movies. Marvel movies have sort of replaced Star Wars for me in my uh, realm of movie interest because uh, when I was a kid, Star Wars was the epitome of entertainment for me, the original Star Wars movies. Um, I also love the movie Superman with Christopher Reeve back in the 70s. And uh, then as the 80s went on, I loved Back to the Future, uh, movies like that. I loved The Matrix in uh, the year 1999. Uh, there's a great movie that sounded like that, Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981. I love Steven Spielberg. I love a lot of uh, the Russo Brothers stuff for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think there's a lot of great things out there that are so exciting now. Uh, being, they're able to make so many cool movies that they could make when I was younger. They could not make a decent Spider-Man movie years ago they didn't have the technology to do it and now they finally do and it's just so cool to see these characters that i've loved my whole life come to life and i know if it can be done now even greater things can be done down the road and uh really in, in kind of a way nothing's impossible anymore so um 
it's so cool to see. So yeah, those are some of my inspirations for now. Next up from Patricia Berg, also known as Creative Pat, Instagram, Creative Pat Voices. How many sketchbooks did you already fill up in your whole life? Wow. Um, gosh, it's gotta be hundreds. I have, um, there's like, I have like four of them right here. One, two, three, I have like four right here that um, are, and I knocked over Spider-Man. I got four right here that I'm filling up and uh, I make notes in them sometimes, but I don't like writing words in my sketchbooks too much. I just like drawing pictures, but anyway, yeah. So I got four right here. I carry these in my, um, in my backpack. But I, I would say hundreds. I just got these all over my house. Just it's just for fun to have them around. Every anytime an idea pops up, just jot it down. So that's what the sketchbooks are good for. They're also good for practicing too. Uh, and if I like a drawing, I'll post it online. If I don't, no one will ever see it. Okay, and Jeremy Weber, Instagram at Jeremy John Weber. Hi Butch, if your creative side and business side were to face off in an epic competition, which side would win and why? Well, that's a great question, Jeremy Weber. I would have to say my creative side would win simply because I've been using it more and it's better trained and it's more battle scarred than my business side. My business side's getting better, but it's kind of like a little kid. It's like baby Groot. My, my business side is baby Groot and my, my creative side is like full grown Groot. So I think the creative side would probably win, but that is an excellent question. Wow. I wonder in, in the battle of questions, which question would win out of all these questions? And Jeremy Weber, your question comes close to winning, but the other questions are pretty great too. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Those of you that supported my Kickstarter over the summer for Oaxis Entertainment, Thank you very much. I can't thank you enough. You guys have been awesome. We could not have reached our goal without you. You mean the world to me. We'll have other cool stuff coming up. I will be keeping you guys informed about Oaxis as we move forward. Once we're getting closer and closer and I start having things to show you, I can't wait to share with you the great things that'll be happening as we build our brand new network, okay? So thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, don't forget, art gives you power. Use it wisely. Hey, Heart fans, subscribe here to keep up with me, Danny, Timmy, Dudley, Bunsen, and the Noob Network, my new app full of cartoons, shows, and games. Download it here. Click over here to watch my most recent video and here to start a playlist related to this video. Whoa, check out that awesome fan art. To be featured here, use hashtag heartfanart and tag me. I'm on every social media platform known to man. Cartoon Butch out. Pencil drop.